Okay, we're into the game now. Hopefully this is going to be the actual launch of game one. Um, this is AOHD versus VNSZ, kind of VNSB if you like in this tournament. Um, and I'm expecting that we'll see some fairly close matches here. VNSZ or VNSB, I'll just call them VNS. Finish that host, Toadie. Um, <laughs> we'll go into this match as favourites, I think. Um, but not by a massive margin. I think we'll see some close games. AOHD did manage to take a game from the highly fancied Aliens and Predators team on 3v3 Arabia uh, during their clash in week one of this tournament, this, of this group stage. So, um, well equipped to take, to take a game off uh, some top teams there by that uh, evidence. And we'll see how this goes. Uh, this is basically a probably going to turn out to be a fight for second place in the group. It's looking as though the other team in the group that I haven't mentioned, the Mexican Slayers team, uh, will probably struggle to complete all of their games. Um, but they were also seen as the weakest team in the group as well. So um, basically, depending on how this goes today, it could see this being a battle for second place but um, there are some third place teams that will go through the, the group stage as well and AOHD uh, if they pick up a win either here today or just by getting a win against Mexico whether that be played out or an admin win uh, if some kind of admin time extension is granted to play the games they might actually get played but yeah AOHD is positioned to go through in third place as well potentially um, well, yeah, let's focus in on the game now after that introduction of the, the group situation. We've got Tetrades on the right hand flank playing as Celts in the green colour, stealing his, a ball from his opponent, which is VNS HK, also Celts. So we've got a Celts war on this right hand side, and the team seem, players seem quite close, but Tetrades has lost his scout while stealing the ball. That is a disaster to lose your scout because. Uh, We've got Celts on the flank, we'll almost certainly see Drushes. Uh, so not only will Tetrades be without scouting information, uh, he also won't have his scout to get involved in the Drush. Um, the players are saying there's lag, and I've kind of felt that whilst I've been spectating it thus far. At least the Tetrades, both of his balls are kind of in the back, so there's less chance that his will be spotted, stolen. Um, this is Arabia Team Random, of course, which is why we do see Celt players. Uh, Desert Fox, who is um, not a member of the AOHD clan, but you know he likes to tune into Milmano streams a lot and take notes from the great man. Uh, so he he's joined AOHD to uh, further his learning, and now he's playing in their A team in this important match. Um, this is a uh, Desert Fox joining AOHD, probably uh, fairly well known, um, good player, kind of around 1900 to 2000 rated player. Did really well in Legacy of the Huns. He's playing Spanish Pocket. That's really good in the blue colour and then on the this side we've got LB playing Turks pocket in the teal colour and this is gonna be fine because uh, every yes. time LB gets Turks pocket he goes like have just just does, just does it um, using that uh, Turk free scout line upgrade to, to go like have at the start of Castle H so he'll go up a couple of population less and he's luring in all the deer fantastically well so that's gonna help him with that as well um, We'll keep an eye on that. Toady, Japanese flank, that's perfect. The Civ lineups here, pretty good, I think, for uh, AOHD in terms of the, their positions on the map. And then let's take a look at the VNS team. Got Fast in the grey colour playing as Spanish flank. That could be um, potentially difficult against Japanese flank for Toady. Um, he should have an advantage there, maybe. And then in the pocket, facing off against LB, so the Turks pockets are in the same position facing each other. We've got Vinesh Sjol uh, in purple. I'm going to need to slow this down a little bit more, get, get away from the host time, because it's really lagging quite a lot. And then Vinesh Nock over here in the yellow colour, playing as Japanese pocket. Um, difficult sieve to play in the pocket of course your knights aren't very good in castle age sometimes there's a temptation to forward the enemy pocket um, and then in in cast in the imperial age 
they kind of have to just change away from the the night line if they if they do indeed go with them in the castle age. Yes. And then finally, as we saw um, at the start of the game when we were seeing Tetrids trying to steal the ball from him, BNS HK in the orange colour as Celts. So overall, I think the Civ positions are a bit better for AOHD. Spanish in the pocket is something you always like to see, and uh, Japanese out on the flanks instead of being in the pocket. So. Um, yeah, small advantage for AHD in Civ positions. Uh, looks like Tetraids will go with a Drush probably oh, here. Don't see losers. a Barracks out just yet for HK. It's going up kind of late to do a Drush. But maybe he'll go up a bit faster and do men at arms. Creating militia as he's clicking up or out just after. Also, maybe we'll think of just walling off across the front of here. Left hand side, Toadie is. Maybe going to drush as well. No militia being created just yet. Oh, actually, he's already made it out all the way. I just missed the red spots on the map. He's actually made it through VNS Fast Wall here. Doesn't find too much to actually hit because Fast Eco is all in the back behind the TC. That lumber camp is um, going to be difficult for Tony to actually locate, potentially. His scout might see it if it comes around here. Um, but that's a very sneaky lumber camp, wanting to avoid this forward wood line. But fast will get that wall up in time. Should be just quickly quick walling all these tiles here. Not on his point of view, so we can't see the foundations coming up. But uh, that's a nice sheltered base for him. See how the things are progressing on the right hand side. Tetris came out, not supported by the scout, of course. It did deny HK from walling. Um, Tet's going to move in on the berries, try and harass those vills, but uh, just a few too many there. It seems like they haven't taken a lot of damage, whereas the militia have been damaged a fair bit. And the drush is out for HK as well, with the scout being there as well, although on zero HP almost. So maybe Tet's drush hit the hit the scout, and that militia will go down. So Tet. Uh, getting good bang for his buck with his militia. He's microing this quite a lot actually. We keep seeing him running in and running out. Continually dragging the Vils away from the berries. Toadie's getting a team wall up, up in behind his Drush here. And the Spanish player only now building barracks. Uh, he's relying on his walls to keep him alive thus far. Well, not to keep him alive, but to help him from being harassed too much. Save him from being harassed too much. LB is... Uh, Going up to the feudal age on 24 vils is Turk's pocket, so light cav uh, build looking ever more likely for him. Of course, when you do that light cav in the pocket, you want to be a little bit faster, go up again a couple of population higher than a. Uh, so, a couple of population lower perhaps than you would if you were going FC Knights. Just try and take advantage of the speed of doing it. Um, but yeah, fast has gone up to the feudal age. The first, I think, uh, and dropping a barracks, trying to build a stable with three villagers. Uh, Toad shouldn't pick a bill there. But there's a suggestion here then that VNS Fast will not be doing conks at all. They'll do knights from the flank, possibly, um, unless he's doing a scout rush. But he went up on quite a high population of his scouts. Don't see any signs that anyone is slinging from the an S team. Sometimes with Spanish flank it can be an idea to have them do knights and then sling them, but I don't see any sling going on from anywhere really. Seems that everyone's putting down barracks and such. He wants to stonewall off a lot of his map if he can though. He's actually going to do a couple of scouts to help fight away the drush and probably knights in the castle age after that. This drush from Toad has stayed in play for such a long time. But um, hasn't impacted VNS fast a great deal just yet, you'd have to say. Game's really uh, running in a bit of temperamental fashion here. It's constantly having to manipulate the speed. The Tetch Raids is the going to be hitting the feudal age just about now it seems that green and orange over here have really delayed each other with this drush micro orange is actually even later than tetris to the feudal age both players seem to be uh just aiming for an fc off the back of their, that kind of extended dark age drush war that they had uh 
Orange will wall up completely. Tetraids. Go watch your aids, Blacksmith, and go up, I should think. Let's check his resources. Yeah, he's good to go up too. So let's keep an eye on LB10. Um, that's a scout heading out. He's on the way to the Castle Age. I want to see for his stables and see if he's adding... Yeah, here we go. The light calf build for LB10. So let's see who might fall prey to that. This wood line can potentially be vulnerable. A couple of light calves if LB manages to approach from this sort of direction rather than coming from here and giving it away a little bit. It could catch two or three bills out on the wood line with a few light calves. Seems we've got a little bit of a pause there, but the uh, game started running again very shortly afterwards, so I'm not going to be hanging around for too long. There's a really uh, a large team wall being put up on, on the hall for AOHD here. Although Tetraids and the green colour, as you can see by the map, has been kind of left outside of it. LB may even manage to pick a veil here. Fortunately for him, his light cab upgrade hasn't kicked in, or he might have even been able to get two of them, uh, but that scout's too low. But still, that's a, some nice damage to VNS fast here. Killing off a, a villager that was probably a deer hunter carrying a good amount of food. It's always a bonus when you kill a hunter because they, they're frequently carrying so many resources. So, uh, LB scouts making the way across the map now. He's going to add a fourth one overall. But equally, Purple is doing the light cap build as well, and LB wasn't quite prepared for this. Um, Purple will actually hit LB a tiny little bit earlier. VNS Seoul. And although he has a spear on the wood line, one vill will go down. It will stop LB from getting this team wall up. I was so focused on the fact that LB was doing the light cap build, I didn't notice that Sol was doing it as well. Um, he's going to get TC on the wood line, so I think LB's light calves are not going to be able to hit Purple, his direct opponent at all. Um, and in order for that light cap build to pay off for LB, he will have to probably hit one of the other pockets like Yellow. Um, Japanese player going up stable market is interesting. Wow, the light calves are in on the wood line. This is... This is Titanic for LB. That could be a couple of bills. That one's taking downhill hits. They are quite damaged. Well, one of them is. But LB has uh, <laughs> really dropped the ball by not getting this this wood, this wood wall up here. The light calves are doing a lot of damage to him just now. His own will run into TCs. Let's look at what else is going on. LB, sorry, Toadie is completely walled out by VNS Fast on the right hand side. Wall stopping Test Rage from getting in. So let's return to the light cav. See what they would up to. Killed one more vill there, I think. Um, and they'll now go and hit Toadie from inside. Two light calves still. Okay, one full HP, one almost dead. They could still do damage to the wood line. Desert Fox and Tetra is combining over here, but not able to get into the, the flank space. It's walled up. Light calves for LB trying to move over and hit the yellow Japanese pocket, but. The Japanese player has a knight there, um, and it'll be won't waste his light calves HP by engaging that. But yeah, interesting um, stable marks, stable market, and four TCs straight off the bat. That's going to be a mega boom by knock if he's able to keep those running. Grey though is super delayed. Look at this castle age time kicking in. He's only now got to about 50% castle. Um, yes. And it looks like, judging by the build that he was doing, he did. I'm looking at this blacksmith actually, and I've been completely blind. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> yeah, he did one stable on the flank, trying to go knights as the flank, but he's got really messed up by by Toadie and trying to get that walling done, and then LB picking his Deerville and stuff like that. Yes. That 21 minute castle age time is, is disastrous. Um, yes. Gonna be really slowed down. Play, playing a Spanish flank there. And on the right hand side, AOHD are through this wall. They're into VNS HK's base here. And there's only one Japanese knight. Um, no. And five crossbows from Orange, whereas there's a lot more crossbows from Tetrades and half a dozen knights coming in for, from Desert Fox here. Um, do they have any upgrades on them just yet? Not, not yet. But still, it's six knights versus one. HK could be about to suffer some damage here. 
although at least he does have some TCs. It's actually his gold sword protected by that TC, but crossbows on this hill from Tetraids could do a lot of damage, deny that gold and really slow him down. Um, Toad is going to go and hit Soul as the pocket because he's so mauled out of attacking his, his uh, flank opponent. But TC's everywhere here, some potentially some knights garrisoned in that stable. Just the two. Bodkin is done and Toad is getting plus one armor, so those crossbows can easily slaughter two knights. And I think Tech Trades needs to hit this take this hill now. Desert Fox has gone over there, found the main gold mine. Uh, and I think AOHD will really be able to apply pressure to HK here. So I think Desert Fox should be communicating to his teammate to go and put the crossbows there, and that's exactly what's going to happen by the looks of it, I think. Go on, Tet. <laughs> you can get there. Dodie's going to move in onto Soul's base, pick up a couple of bills. He's found that nice little gap between the fields of fire of the TC, so can he actually stand there and deny the main gold, which is quite nice. Let's have a look. On the left-hand side, Fast has finally hit the gas stage. He's gone two TCs and got three villages on stone, so maybe he will just try and go conks after all in the end. He did stable blacksmith to go up, but he hasn't seemingly produced... Okay, he's got one knight out on the field that I see, uh, but that's it. And he's not making more, so maybe he'll just boom a little bit inside of his stone walls and make some conks later on. Tetrades parking those crossbows where I wanted to see them now. He can deny that main gold. No, no. And that second gold for HK is not in a good spot either. Where's his third? Way back here, which could be vulnerable to Fox's knights going there if they actually have scouted that or they scout it later. So it seems almost that HK is being um, being left to die a little, little bit by his pocket here, who is the Japanese pocket. Um, he's only made six knights overall, no upgrades. Um, Second stable has been added, and he's going to get plus one armor. Uh, but the Japanese pocket here, the yellow player, VNS Knock, just went for four TC boom, pretty much with barely any knights at all. So he's going to have a, an amazing economy. And as Japanese, like you don't need the largest number of villages in the world to be really effective. Um, so you know he's going to be able to support a large army and maybe uh, halves to deal with Desert Fox's knights when he eventually goes up. And Tetrades playing as Celts will be a, won't be catching up to that stage anytime soon. So just going halbs, Japanese halbs against the Spanish knights can be a good play. But the question is, how much damage will VNS HK and the Orange Colour have suffered by then? Um, it's a shame for Heo HD that they don't have siege coming in here. Uh, and with Desert Fox's knights going a little bit AFK, no. these knights could be able to do some damage to Tet's crossbows but the extra ones parked in the breach here not able to get inside HK's base but offering good extra damage uh, from protection and I'd say with the amount of knights that went down for the amount of crossbows that went down there Tetroids didn't get caught out all too much there uh, Desert Fox will instead go and hit knock uh, as best he can but four TCs there's not really much of an exposed area to hit here all Fox can do is run under the TCs and idle subvilles but you don't want to stand under TCs forever, certainly not without plus two armor. Um, and he's going to try and move away, find something else to hit, but now he's going to run right into two TCs. VNS Fast, on the way to the Imperial Age, um, I'm on his point of view. I haven't noticed any sling coming out. Uh, so he's going to go up to, fifth, up to the Imperial Age with 54 vils of Spanish. Let me just cycle the overlay. Um, just to see, yeah, absolutely no sling at all, so he's, he's doing a fast imp Spanish. <laughs> Which is interesting. Toadie and LB10 now pushing out in combination. How much does Purple have on the map at this point? He's got 72 villages and only 5 military, so uh, almost a full boom for Purple as well. But he's not really ahead of the his opponent in villages either. He's only three villages ahead of LB10, which is just one round of villager production from TCs. So uh, the fact that he's got very little military at all um, hasn't allowed him to get ahead in terms of boom. And that Desert Fox picking up some decent villager kills on, on Nock, idling him a little bit, but he does have 86 villages of Japanese, which is getting close to as many as you need when you're playing Japanese. 
Looks like Tetraid has just walked all the way through uh, the orange base now. Um, he's had enough of kicking orange and he's gonna go and group up with Desert Fox and they're gonna try and do more damage to the yellow pocket now, the Japanese pocket. Ye yellow won't get this wall up. The two knight armies now engaged but plus two done versus... Okay, plus, plus two and forging for... Um, for VNS knock. Surprised he didn't get bloodlines instead of forging. I oh, know, sorry, it's Japanese, never mind. What I, wanted, what I was meant to say is I'm surprised uh, Desert Fox didn't have bloodlines at this point of view, at this point of time. Tetrade's finding a nice little hill there, but unfortunately his crossbowmen are um, kind of surrounded there. That hill would have been so much better for AOHD if uh, Desert Fox could have kept his knights sort of in front of the crossbowmen and shielded them. Um, didn't really happen, and but even so, whilst the yellow knights were concentrating on the crossbowmen, um, Desert Fox's knights were cleaning up, and now, yeah, Bloodline is finally kicking in for Desert Fox. Uh, and now Nock has he pretty much no army. He has produced a couple more knights from here. He's actually dropping stables, so is he going to go and just flood Japanese cavaliers? They're not the strongest. They, they miss Bloodlines, and I think plus four armor as well. But let's see how that flooding weak cavaliers goes for him um, meanwhile LB and Toadie continue to gang up on purple killing five bills or so there and Toadie can kill lots more in that wood line and really wood lines are kind of deniable for a soul because like he, he can only get villagers here safely other than, other than this wood line on the left hand side um, let's keep an eye on how Grey is developing because he did fast in with zero sling unless my overlay is broken. Um, he's going to get Cavalier. He's got up to 70 villagers and he's coming forward with some 630 stone. As soon as that's 650, we'll see a castle on this hill almost certainly. Good spot actually. That's denying um, Toadie's two front goals. I think those two goals both belong to Toadie. Um, but, you know. Going fast imp with a little... Well, it's not fast imp like a Turk fast imp, but you know what I mean. Going up to Imperial Age with 55 villagers. Um, a Spanish. A little bit odd um, if you're not getting any sling. And he's going to go up to do Cavaliers. Won't be able to afford Paladin, I've thought. But he's playing against Japanese who have access to super pikemen and super halberdiers. So I don't know how well that's going to work particularly. Um, he's actually going to help out against LB10 and Toady who are still still skulking around in purple space um, but some cam camels in the mix as well for LB kind of evening this out purple's coming with a lot of camels so um, I think that grey and purple will take this fight now and it could mean that um, although you know LB might escape with his mounted units but Toady could well lose a lot of his crossbows here potentially we'll have to see let's return to the right hand side we haven't been here for a while um, Desert Fox Flying Knights, he's not clicked up yet, minute 33, um, has made so many knights, so he has 38 knights, so this is a heavy castle age play from him, um, and he's still causing problems for the Japanese pocket who has 115 bills but hasn't clicked up, um, and you know, if you, the longer he keeps this full castle age with uh, Bloodline Knights and plus two, plus two versus uh, plus two plus two without bloodlines then that's just gonna go in Desert Fox's favor unless you know knock out some pikemen or monks or something just to turn that like um, you know when you're playing against someone flooding knights as and you're Japanese then really if you're if you've got a bigger eco than they have then you'd rather be in the pure age with some halberdiers mixed in so Castle did come up in a nice spot on the left hand side for VNS fast. We do have a pause here, so let's just take stock. Okay, it's unpaused just as I said there. LB's on the way to Imperial Age, 50%. Toad is 50%. Desert Fox is still playing full castle with 50 knights. Um, and Tetrades is doing a little bit. He's actually up already. He's doing a little bit of a ram push. Kept, kept a few crossbows alive from the castle ages. Adding Halbs. Uh, he's vert matched up against Celts of his own. Uh, well, sorry, he's matched up against a Kelp player as well. Uh, HK has zero military and 88 vils. Tetrades could be in position to do a fast push here. Um, no military out in the field for HK whatsoever. Tetrades double his score, uh, pushing with Hel Halbs and capped rams. Uh, I fear for Orange here. 
Yellow's sealed out the huge blue army of knights, um, but he's still not clicked up. Minute 36 as Japanese pocket with 135 bills and he hasn't clicked up yet. That that tells you something's gone wrong. Um, <laughs> but then again, like he does need to keep pumping military to defend against Desert Fox, just going ham on him. But it's actually Desert Fox who will reach the Imperial Age first, so this is dangerous. If Desert Fox gets Imperial Age, Cavalier, an armor upgrade, and H and Knock is still in the Castle Age for a long time, or if further then he'll really struggle he'll be helped out by camels from his other pocket but you know if if the the camels are having to come from over here uh, from the purple player then that means that LB is kind of freed up and he's adding mass camels as well to come over here and eventually deal with um, the cavaliers of VNS fast uh, he'll wait for heavy camel and plate barding armor and then he'll deal with that and so I, I feel like HD have basically got a free man now um, that it's kind of developing into a 3v4 situation of who, and it depends who they choose to fight. Tetra raids destroying, um, yellow being slowed down by blue, purple has to help yellow against blue um, and that just leaves teal and red to 2v1 grey is the kind of summary of the situation right now um, to kind of summarise that with just the colours so it's a little bit easier to follow but Good advantage for AOHD. Tetrades is now laying waste to the orange base. His main TC, I think that was his starting TC, has gone down. This one's gone down on the main gold. GG being called by VNS HK. Uh, he hasn't called it in the, to everybody with the all chat just yet. So maybe the other VNS players will fight on and tell him, no, don't resign just yet. But, um, you know, this flank is going Cavaliers. He's only just now affording Paladin. And he's now about to be hit by Japanese pikemen and uh, 30 plus four heavy camels. Uh, although the camel castle will do good damage to the heavy camels, the camel avaliers have to get the hell out of there. Um, they've got to, got to retreat to their own base. That's going to buy Toady all the time he needs to just get like Japanese halbs and trebs and just push in through there if they want. Um, Desert Fox will now hit the Imperial Age. We can see it's just kicking in for him. He's losing some army in the back of uh, Yellow's base, but also killing Vils. Not that um, a few Vils makes a difference when you're a Japanese and you've got 130. But uh, yeah, he'll just help out Tetrades. When Tetrades uh, combines with Desert Fox, that's Halberdier plus Cavalier. It's going to beat Heavy Camel from purple, it's going to beat the Castle Age Knights from yellow and it seems everyone's calling GG or about to, nobody's resigned just yet, I've seen GG's typed a couple of times but still they don't resign, uh, it seems somebody else in the VNS team is saying uh, maybe we can still win this, but there has been like a 20% overall team score difference open up now, um, also I always say score doesn't tell you everything but it does show that HD are in the lead with VNS HK almost out of the game at this point. 60 villages and 30 idols. And he isn't going to be 60 villages for very much longer. I don't know if he's even playing anymore. Um, he called, we saw him say GG a long time ago. But um, they didn't resign. And now he's seen it. Now he's just done the town bell. But <laughs> I think he needs to get... get away from this base, evacuate this flank a long time ago, these will all go down, the ones in this TC will go down, the camels are here from uh, purple, but those are only plus two cavaliers, camels sorry, um, they're not terribly th threatening to a larger mass of cavaliers and with a few halves there, certainly not, uh, those bills from HK, they're not even running, HK is AFK right now, um, over here, LB and Toadie are combining. There's a lot of paladins out for Grey, but there are a lot of heavy camels, plus Japanese halberdiers. But paladins stand no chance. Purple's full over here trying to fight this, and HK's are back again. He's only just now doing loom. What the... Okay, that's stuck, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. I think it's because the, the overlay is like always five seconds behind or so. Like It shows the research bar completing. Um, at a time where it's actually already completed. I think that's that's why. But he only got Loom at minute 42. So no wonder he's lost Vil, lost Vils early on and was struggling so much. Now this forward castle for 
VNS fast goes down the Manganel, kills the villagers in their prison. And Toady will take back his two front golds and be able to access VNS fast front gold as well. I think all that they need on this side maybe. We might see some trebs coming out just to get destroy that castle behind the wall. Um, Japanese only access to capped ramp, of course, no siege ramp. And now Desert Fox with 30 Cavaliers. It's showing everyone getting loom here, is that the case? Desert Fox is just doing it. We seem to have a loom bug in the spectator dashboard here. It's showing everyone getting loom at minute 42. This isn't right. That's that's completely wrong. That, so I think when we saw Orange getting loom as well, that 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 can't be it. There's no way five, four or five players didn't get loom until minute 42 or 43 and then they all got it at the same time. <laughs> that's a weird bug. I've never seen it before. So yellow's starting to get out. Um, Elite Samurai, presumably, are they elite just yet? Yep, yeah, they are, and Halberdiers, which is a good combo against the Kelp player who's just going Halberdier. Um, they will win that, and it means that um, Desert Fox and Tetraids can't really touch the Japanese player too much with the composition that they have just now. Um, but Purple is still over here, uh, presumably trying to hunt down these Paladins with his heavy camels, and that leaves... Uh, Toad, OD and LB10 in the per teal and the red color to push against Grey uh, together. Um, some hand cannoneer transition from Grey to try and help out against the Halves and they do okay against the Heavy Camels as well. Um, but still Rams in the here tanking some of that fire. They will bust through that wall in a second. And Toad OD now getting some trebs on the hill to try and take down that castle that's blockading the entrance to the um, great base here. LB10 and Seoul have a big camel war here. But um, I think that's a good use of the camels for LB because like, if he takes that purple camels off the field then it, it gives Desert Fox more um, free reign to deploy his paladins wherever he wishes. LB10 taking gold from the middle of the map along with AOHG, their, their map control is off the charts now. Um, Yellow will come forward with some infantry into Tech's base, but he's building a castle here, he's got TC, should be able to shoot up all those infantry. Um, he's still producing full halberdiers, which aren't too great uh, against Japanese halberdiers, and then obviously the elite samurai. Um, and then it seems like he wants to do a champion transition. Um, great against the halbs, of course, even Japanese ones, but the elite samurai, still so awesome. So VNS will try to get some trade going. This is a massive congestion going on here of all these units, the fortified walls and such getting in there, but Desert Fox bringing all his paladins uh, and the heavy camels in there from LB, they're wiping out all of Grey's paladins, so Grey will only have hand cannons, there's some hand cannons from the Turks player, the pocket purple, um, but with paladins and rams getting involved, bombard towers even coming out now, um, hand cannons won't last long enough. I think in a couple of minutes, even though both yellow and purple are over here, grey will have lost a lot of his base as well. Yellow is pushing back a little bit over here though, he does have a lot of forward um, forward production facilities. He's pushing against Tetrades a little bit, but Desert Fox is, is recognising that and uh, fading over to this side a little bit more to help out um, the Paladins. Still not the best thing to have here when there are lots of Japanese halves, but to be fair there aren't that many at the moment. There's more samurai and you know samurai do good damage to paladins as well, but um, with Desert Fox sending some paladins over there, Tetra to be able to hold against yellow. It's now like full heavy camel war between LB and Joel, the two turns pockets. But whilst LB's addition to his heavy camels is bombard cannons and bombard towers for the purple player it's just hand cannons and um, eventually the sheer firepower of having all those bombard towers and bombard cannons in the back will win the day I think. Orange wants to get tea. <coughs> Sorry. Need a drink. Oh 
Oh, my throat went really dry there. Um, yeah, Orange wants to try and re Please. reclaim some of his front resources, but it's not really going to happen. That TC may be destroyed before that one village even finishes building it. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, VNS just trying to, to hold on here, but Grey's losing ground. Orange is down to 17 population. Um, although the two pockets are maintaining high populations and there are a couple of players on the AOHD team, in fact only LB10 is close to the pop cap, they have so much more population overall and they don't, and it's basically 4v3 right now, so barring uh, incredible defensive stand by VNS here, um, it's surely only a matter of time until AOHD claim game one. Um, the Spanish player seems to be investing mainly in halberdiers now and just a few help hand cannoneers in the back and even some elite skirm it's mostly trash they do have a lot of markets out but not a lot of trade in fact all the great trade carts are all bunched up together he's got a couple of groups of four on the way the turk bombard towers continue to come forward from lb10 13 range is done uh japanese trebs are going to start laying waste to vns fast base um, it seems like the army's just kind of disappeared a little bit though for AHD here. Suddenly Toady and LB just don't have any army there. They won't lose the ground they've gained because the VNS team has no answer to the Bombard Towers. So they'll they'll hold this this uh, beachhead if you like in Grey's base. But um, it seems like LB10 is concentrating his military elsewhere just now. I don't know why it seems this teal dot on the map over there. I'm going to switch to his point of view because I just want to find his actual military units. He's some light caps of Hussars coming out, sorry. Um, yeah, he's just streaming Hussars and heavy camels and a few cavaliers across the map. But their army is kind of missing for AOHD on the left side just for a moment here. But they should replenish it just in time. Siege Rams do come out for the Spanish player. Might pick up a Bombard Cannon and a Tread before they get taken down. Arbalest, a good mix for Tony now because he can destroy almost all of this with, with um, Arbalest. Hand Cannoneers and Halbs will go down to the Arbalest and then uh, only Elite Skirms can be cleaned up by whatever cavalry units LB10 chooses to produce. Bombard Towers in the back continuing to just slaughter everything. Yellow is pushing well against Tetrades, it has to be said, so this is why they're still hanging around in the game, I think. Um, they feel like maybe they can kill kill Tetrades um, and make it 3v3 and then see how they, can, how they go. Uh, Tetrades is down to 125 population, but it's still got 110 villagers, so um, it's far from being knocked out of the game. He's reboomed backwards a long, long way, and although there's a few samurai uh, executing villagers on the farmland, uh, this could be cleaned up. Desert Fox can go in there. Um, and meanwhile, whilst that is going on, Desert Fox is having more or less free reign to hit the pockets. He's building forward castles all over the yellow front line, basically in the trade room, um, and raiding yellow economy there, he's hitting purple economy with paladins. They're both down to 86, 87 villagers. Um, so all four AHD players, over 100 villagers, that's about 450 villagers, sorry, yeah, 450 villagers in total, um, a lot less for the VNS team, so the economy for the HD is so much better. The trade line is, uh, I'm going to say fantastic, it's, it's pretty good, isn't it? But by, by comparison, this is what the VNS trade line looks like. <laughs> just, just playing a game of where is it? <laughs> and now the purple starting to laugh. It's still saying about lag, but it seems like finally they, they're ready to concede the game. Perhaps they're saying GG again, but that's still not triggering resignations. Yeah, here we go. GG's been called. And LHD takes game one with a pretty convincing performance, uh, wiping out. Uh, VNS HK on the right hand side proved crucial and although Tetrage did get pushed back in the end it kind of meant that for a while it was 4v3 and AOHD just strategically were always on top because they were kind of doubling grey for example um, or doubling yellow stuff like that the, the the fact that he went 4v3 so early meant that AOHD it was theirs to lose basically good game by them and 1-0 in the series
So the underdog taking the first game here, or slight underdog and probably according to the seeding anyway. I'll take a quick break. We'll into, be into game two in just a couple of minutes, I should think. It'll be VNSZ's home map. Yes. Okay, the spectator delay is counting down, so it won't be very long at all. Catch you in a minute. <laughs> 